All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder. Students, kya aap bata sakte ho? How does chemistry link our left hand to a pair of scissors and to the terpene limoline which is found in orange peels? I am Dr. Sujata Sen Gupta. Welcome to S Chand Academy. Or chaliye hum pata karte how chemistry is able to link all of these together. And the answer is chirality. Or we will know more about it under the topic stereochemistry. If you want to learn more about chirality, about enantiomers. Please refer to the books by S. Chand Publishing, the link for which is also provided in the drop box below. All these objects are left hand, the scissors and limonene. These are all examples of molecules or objects which have a left handed and a right handed form. Our left hand will not fit into a gloves belonging to our right hand. Similarly, our left feet will not fit into a shoe for our right feet. So, objects which have a left-handed and a right-handed form, they are said to be chiral. It comes from the Greek word which means handed. We can tell whether an object is chiral based upon its mirror image. A chiral object will have a mirror image that is different from the original image. We are going to learn about the chemistry of chiral molecules, which falls under the branch of stereochemistry. So what is stereochemistry? Stereochemistry, students, is nothing but the study of the three-dimensional structure of molecules. Now, let's go and revise a little bit. Isomers. Aapko to pata hai what are isomers? Molecules which have the same chemical formula. Now, isomers, as you know, can be of two broad classes. Constitutional isomers and stereoisomers. Constitutional isomers, to aapko pata hai? These are those isomers which will differ in their bonding sequence. Same molecular formula but different bonding sequence. But stereoisomers will have not only the same molecular formula but they will also have the same bonding sequence. Difference kya hoga will be their orientation of the atoms in space. Stereoisomers will have different physical, chemical and biological properties. So, it is very important students that we understand the concept of stereoisomerism. Stereoisomers are of two broad types, diastereomers and enantiomers. Enantiomers are compounds where the mirror images of the molecule are going to be non-superimposable. Today, I am going to teach you all that you need to know about enantiomers. Let's come back to our favorite word chiral. What was chiral? What molecules are chiral? Objects which have a left-handed and a right-handed forms are said to be chiral. Our hands, our feet, scissors, these are all examples of objects which are said to be chiral. The mirror images of chiral molecules are non-superimposable. They cannot be superimposed. A chiral object is going to have a mirror image that is different from the original object. These non-superimposable mirror images are known as enantiomers. A chiral molecule will always have an enantiomer. 
और इन इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स क्या है दे आर डूइंग नॉन सुपर इम्पोजिबल एनी मॉलिक्यूल दैट डज नॉट हैव एन इन इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज नोन एज ए सो लेट्स गो एंड लुक अ लिटिल बिट डीपर इन टू द केमिस्ट्री ऑफ दीज काल मॉलिक्यूल्स सो वॉट इज इट अबाउट अ मॉलिक्यूल दैट मेक्स इट काल the most common feature that leads to chirality in a molecule is the presence of a carbon atom which is bonded to four different groups such a carbon is commonly known as an asymmetric carbon or a chiral carbon atom and it is commonly designated by using this asterisk sign so for example here i have written down lactic acid an important metabolite in our body so lactic acid if you look at it carefully does it have a chiral carbon yes it does this carbon which we will designate by the asterisk symbol is a chiral carbon atom it is attached to four different groups now let's consider this molecule over here this is cis 1 dichlorocyclopentane does this molecule have a chiral carbon ha ah, it does two car chiral carbons here this carbon with the asterisk symbol and this carbon over here but even though it has two chiral carbon atoms it is still going to be an a chiral molecule q because of the presence of an internal mirror plane अब ये इंटरनल मिरर प्लेन क्या होता है इफ वी ड्रॉ अ लाइन फ्रॉम द टॉप कार्बन एटम ऑल द वे डाउन टू द बॉटम वट हैव वी डन वी हैव डिवाइडेड दिस मॉलिक्यूल अब देखिए द पार्ट ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल विच इज ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ दिस लाइन इज एग्जैक्टली द मिरर इमेज ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल विच इज राइट ऑफ दिस लाइन दिस imaginary line is known as its internal mirror plane and it is commonly denoted by this small greek letter sigma so all molecules which shows the presence of this internal mirror plane are going to be a chiral now aage badhte and let's look a little more closer into this concept of chirality here aap dekh sakte is i have drawn the two enantiomers of the molecule alanine alanine aap sabko to pata hai it is an essential amino acid that is present in our body the alanine structure that i have drawn on the left over here you can see is our natural alanine the alanine which is metabolized in our body the one on the right is a unnatural aniline and it cannot be metabolized in our body but dono to aniline hai so how can we distinguish between the two so our question is how do we distinguish between the two and is there a unique name that we can give to both of these structures theek hai to thoda sochiye ek chhota sa break lete and we will come back and look into how we can distinguish between the two main dinesh ahuja s chand academy se aap logo ke chemistry ke jo mushkil topic hain inorganic chemistry khas kar unhe aasan karne aapke paas aa raha hu jald to mere video agar aapko pasand aate hain to zarur unko like subscribe aur share kijiyega So welcome back. Before the break, I had left you with a question that these two enantiomers of alanine, इसको कैसे हम distinguish करेंगे? What unique name can we give to them? The difference between the two enantiomers lies in the three D arrangement of the four atoms around this asymmetric carbon atom. Any asymmetric carbon atom. will always have two possible 
mirror images or two possible spatial arrangements. These spatial arrangement students are known as a configuration. So if we can name these two configurations, then we have a specific way to name our two different enantiomers. In this case, to name the two different enantiomers of aniline or to name any two different enantiomers of any compound. So, isko kaise karte? That rule is known as the CIP rule, which stands for the Kahn Ingold Prelog Convention. So according to this convention, we are going to prioritize all the atoms which are directly attached to the chiral carbon atom. How will we prioritize these different atoms? That is going to be based on the atomic number. The highest atomic number is going to be prioritized by giving it a number one. And the lowest atomic number is going to give, be given a number four. Once we have prioritized all our atoms, we are then going to orient the chiral center in such a way that the lowest priority substituent is always going to be away from us, away from the viewer. Number three, once we have done this, now we will trace the path from priority one to priority number two to priority atom with priority number three. If when we are tracing the path, our movement is in a clockwise direction, then that particular enantiomer is going to be designated as R. R in Latin, it stands for rectus, which means upright. If, however, when we are tracing this path, we are moving in a counterclockwise direction, then that particular chiral center or enantiomer is going to be designated as S which in Latin means sinister or right. So, up, let's come back to our aniline molecule and let's see which one is R and which one is S. Aap bhi hamare saath saath isko practice kijiye. So, here, first what do we do? We identify the chiral carbon. Wo to humne kar liye. Ab kya karenge? Let's prioritize the different atoms attached to this carbon, chiral carbon. So, nitrogen obviously has the highest atomic number. So, this is going to be given. So, this will be given number one. Next is going to be the carbon of the carboxylic acid group. This is our number two. Then is the carbon of the methyl group, number three. And finally, hydrogen which has the lowest atomic number is given priority number four. Ab hum kya karenge? Now we will look at the molecule and we will place the substituent, in this case hydrogen, at the back, away from us, which we have done already over here. So what are we going to do? Now that we have prioritized it, we will trace the path. We will go from one, two and three and what have we done? We have gone in the counterclockwise direction. So our natural aniline is going to have an S configuration. Now let's look at our unnatural aniline. Same thing, we will write the priority groups. Nitrogen is one, carbon of the carboxylic acid is two, carbon of the methyl group is three, our lowest priority group, which is hydrogen, is already away from us. It is at the back. Now let's trace the path going from one, two, and three. Which direction have we gone? We have gone in the clockwise direction, making this our R configuration. There are a few things to remember when we are prioritizing the different atoms around the carbon center. Number one, it is all based upon the atomic number. 
So we will assign priority based upon the atomic number. Atoms with higher atomic number will receive a higher priority. And please remember, we have to look at the atom which is directly attached to the carbon, chiral carbon atom. In case we have atoms where they are the same, then what do we do? It's a tie. Ab kya karenge? We will look at the next atom. So for example, if we have an OH and we have an O methoxy, the O methoxy is going to get higher priority. If we have a double bond in the molecule, then what do we do? We will treat the double and the triple bonds as if each were a bond to a separate atom. What if the lowest priority atom, which is usually the hydrogen, is pointed towards us and not away from us? No worries, no need to panic. What can we do? We can leave it as it is and we can simply apply the CIP rules backward. Or what we can do is we can follow the single swap rule. What are we going to do here? We are going to swap the hydrogen. Okay, so ek practice karte. Let's say we have this molecule here. You can see that here the hydrogen, which is the lowest priority group, it is pointed towards us. Sabse pehle, what we can do is we can swap this hydrogen with the OH group. So let's go cut there and let's rewrite it. Okay, now we will list down the priority groups. Okay, so the OH, oxygen atom, highest atomic number, priority number one, then is going to be that carbon attached to the benzene ring number two finally the carbon of the methyl group number three and as usual hydrogen is number four now what are we going to do let's trace the path we will go from the first to the second to the third what have we done we have gone in we have determined that this has the s configuration but this is not our original enantiomer Remember, this was our original enantiomer. So what can we do? This means that if this one has the S configuration, our original enantiomer must have been the R enantiomer. So this is the single swap group. Ab aage barte, and let's look at the properties of these enantiomers. Enantiomers essentially have the same physical properties boiling point, melting points, and many other properties are going to be the same. The difference of the properties of enantiomers will only appear when they are going to be placed in the presence of other chiral molecules. So, polarimetry is a common method which is used to distinguish between enantiomers based upon their ability to rotate a plain polarized light. That enantiomer which rotates the polarized light to the right direction, this is going to be known as dextrorotatory and it is commonly designated by either the plus symbol or the small letter B. Those isomers that rotate the plane of polarized light to the left, these are commonly known as levorotatory and are designated by the minus sign or by the small letter L. A solution of equal amounts of two enantiomers in a mixture will become optically active. And this mixture is commonly given the name as a racemic mixture or we can say that a racemate is a pair of a DL mixture. Many drugs which are currently available, they are actually sold as a racemic mixture or as a racemic. Now, 
can we have compounds which are chiral but they don't have a chiral center that is also possible molecules like ortho substituted biphenyl and substituted alenes are all examples of molecules that are chiral but do not have a chiral center now let's move on to another very interesting topic which is about fischer projections till now all the diagrams i've shown you i have written the molecule in the three dimensional orientation in space but the fischer projection or the fischer projection formula is a convention where we can draw or depict our stereo formula in the two dimension without destroying any of its stereochemical information now let's go back to our lactic acid molecule and see how this can be written in the form of a fischer projection in the fischer projection formula it is usually written as a cross where the chiral carbon atom is the one which is at the intersection and it is not mentioned chiral center is going to be kept on the plane of the paper the horizontal lines will depict the bonds which are going to be projecting out of the plane of the paper towards the viewer okay or the wedges and the vertical lines will project those bonds that are going to go into the plane of the paper that is they are going to be away from us okay so now this can be rewritten in the form of a cross no need to write the chiral center and we'll just put in the rest of the atoms so this is the fischer projection of our s lactic acid now if i give you a random fischer projection can you assign the rs configuration yes you can kaise karenge hum by following the cip rule few things that you need to remember while assigning the fischer projection there are some limitations number 1 fischer projections that differ by 180 degrees rotation they are essentially the same rotation of a fischer projection by 90 degrees in either direction will change the absolute configuration of the chiral center interchanging any two ligands around the chiral center will also change the absolute configuration of the chiral center let's move on and consider the two structures for 2 bromo 3 chloro butane this is a molecule which has two chiral centers or two asymmetric carbon atoms aapne zarur isko identify kar liya which are the chiral atoms all right now what is the relationship between these two structures are they going to be the same compound or are they going to be enantiomer ab how will we determine that so for that we have to assign the rs configuration aapko to rules pata hai so very quickly go and assign and this is what we come with now based on the rules that we just practiced we noticed that the carbon 2 has an s configuration on both the structures but carbon 3 on the structure on the left it has an r configuration whereas carbon 3 for the structure on the right it has an s configuration so therefore these two compounds 
they cannot be enantiomers because they are not mirror images. So since these compounds are stereoisomers, but they are not enantiomers, so what must they be? They must be diastereomers. In fact, both of these diastereomers are chiral and are associated with a enantiomer. So we learned about the chemistry of enantiomers. And we had a slight introduction to the topic of diastereomers. If you want to learn more about enantiomers, then please refer to the books by S. Chan Publishing. The link is provided in the drop box below. So, if you've enjoyed and liked this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And thank you for watching.